Okay, in this video we're going to look at uh, something called Wilson's Theorem. So Wilson's Theorem says the following. So if you have a prime number p, then p minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod p. Um, okay, great. So I have another example involving uh, congruences earlier where we actually could have used Wilson's theorem to produce the result more quickly, but here we'll do this for all values of p. So I think the example we did in that video was 12 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod 13. I'll let you guys check that out if you want to. So before we prove Wilson's theorem, we need um, a following lemma. And the lemma will be the following. So if a squared is congruent to um, 1 mod p, then um, a is congruent to 1 mod p, or a is congruent to negative 1 mod p. So in other words, the only two square roots of 1 mod a prime are 1 and negative 1. So it's this kind of thing that makes uh, arithmetic modulo primes um, pretty similar to arithmetic modulo uh, the real numbers because we know that in the real numbers the only two square roots of 1 are 1 and negative 1 as well. Okay, um, so let's look at the proof. And I should say that um, what this means is, in particular, if you look at all the numbers mod p, every number has a unique inverse modulo p, and it turns out the only numbers that are their own inverse are 1 and negative 1. So that's actually how we're going to apply this in the proof of Wilson's theorem, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Okay, good. So let's look at our proof. So let's suppose that... A is congruent to 1 mod P. And so that means that P uh, divides, sorry, A squared is congruent to 1 mod P. So that means that P divides A, A squared minus 1. Good. And then from that, it follows that P divides A minus 1 times A plus 1 which is great because now uh, we can use a limit that we've proved earlier on the channel that if p divides a minus 1 times a plus 1, then that means that p divides a minus 1 or p divides a plus 1. So we did this with if p divides a times b, then p divides a or p divides b. But in this case, we'll use a minus 1 and a plus 1. Okay, good. So now let's look at what each of these give us. So what this means, this, uh, this, from this one it would follow that A is congruent to 1 mod P. Or, and from this one it would follow that, P, that A is congruent to negative 1 mod P. And that's the end of the proof because that's what we ended, wanted to end up with. So now let's, uh, I want to state really carefully how we're going to use this in Wilson's theorem for when we get to it. So in particular, the only um, integers who are their own inverses mod p, and so I mean multiplicative inverses, are um, plus and minus 1 mod p. So in other words, when you reduce the mod p, you either get plus 1 or minus 1. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to the proof of Wilson's theorem. Okay, after our lemma, we're ready to prove Wilson's theorem. So let's look at the proof. So we'll consider p minus 1 factorial, which we can very quickly write as 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to p minus 2 times p minus 1 mod p. So what we've done here is just recall that p minus 1 factorial will be this raising product 1 times 2 times 3 ending at p minus 1. Um, 
and then we've grouped the middle terms together, two, three, up to p minus two, and left off the one and the p minus one. Okay, good. So now what we'll do is use the fact that every number, so let's recall, um, every number between 2 and p minus 2 has a unique inverse not equal to itself. Great. So now uh, what we'll think about doing is pair each of these off. So pair each inverse pair together and multiply. So now what we'll end up with here is the following. So that will give us um, p minus 1 factorial will be uh, congruent to 1 times 2 times 2 inverse times 3 times 3 inverse all the way up to p minus 1, sorry, p minus 2 times p minus 2 inverse times p minus 1. And I've been a little sloppy here because, of course, 2 inverse could be 3, and p minus 2 inverse could be 2 or 3, but just considering the fact that those aren't the case, this is what would happen. And if they were, then we would just like, instead of writing 3 and 3 inverse, we would write 3 for 2 inverse, and so on. So we pair each inverse together, and we'll notice that all of these cancel to 1s. And what we're left with is 1 and p minus 1. So that means we get p minus 1 mod p, but that's the same thing as negative 1 mod p. Um, and that finishes the proof. So let's see if we can look at a little example real quick. So what if we did something like take... 17 factorial mod 19. So what if we looked at that? So let's see, we know that 18 factorial will be congruent to negative 1 mod 19. So that means if we multiply this by 18 factorial, then we'll get negative 1 mod 19. So let's see, we could set up an equation. x is uh, equal to 18 factorial mod, sorry, 17 factorial mod 19. Now we can multiply both sides of this congruence by 18. So that gives us 18x is equal to 18 factorial mod 19, which is congruent to negative 1 mod 19. And then furthermore, we know that 18 is equal to negative 1 mod 19, so that means we can replace this 18 with negative 1, and we get negative x is negative 1 mod 19, and so that tells us that x is congruent to 1 mod 19. In other words, if we put this back in terms of our original, that means 17 factorial is congruent to 1 mod 19. Okay, we're done.